What's up guys, it's me, John, and welcome to Travel and Educational Vlog Content. So in this video, we will discuss engineering mechanics, dynamics of rigid bodies. So before that, all of the contents of this video, including the problems, are all based on, on my reference book, which you have seen on screen. So to start, we have here the principles of dynamics. Dynamics is a branch of mechanics which deals with the study of bodies in motion. It was first formulated by Galileo in the year 1564 to 1642. Divided in two branches, we have kinetics and kinematics. When we say kinematics, it is geometry of motion, used to define the motion of a particle or body without consideration of the forces causing the motion. Kinetics is, a, is the branch of mechanics that relates the force acting on a body to its mass and acceleration. So in this video, we will first discuss rectilinear translation, which means that the motion of a translating body moving in a straight line. So to make the video shorten, I have summarizes. I have to summarize it all. So we have here the terms and formula. S stands for displacement. Then we have a formula to find it, the displacement. We have S equals to initial velocity times time plus one half times acceleration times time squared. V stands for velocity. To find it, we have two formulas. We have final velocity equals to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Then we have also squared of final velocity equals squared of initial velocity plus two times acceleration times displacement. To find the acceleration, we can use or we can derive all the formulas written above it's either in the formula of displacement or in the formula of velocity it depends on the situation or the problem given so we have here our sample problem on a certain stretch of track trains run at 60 miles per hour how far back of a stop train should a warning torpedo be placed signal an uncommon train. Assume that the brakes are applied at once and retard the train at the uniform rate of 2 feet per second squared. So we have here a given the initial velocity is equivalent to 60 miles per hour. Then since that, then we have the acceleration 2 feet per second squared. Since that, it, uh, we have here the problem, assume that the brakes are applied at once so to stop the train so we will use it instead of positive two feet per second squared we will use it negative two feet per second squared so, but first we will convert the 60 miles per hour into feet per second so to convert it we have here initial velocity equals to 60 times 5,280 over 3,600, and that's equivalent to 88 feet per second. Then find the displacement. Solution. So as you notice in our previous slides, we have a formula of S equals to initial velocity times T plus 1 half times AT squared. So we don't use it because we don't have time we don't have a value of time, so there is no time given in the problem. So instead of this, we will use the formula for velocity. So we will derive it to find the displacement. So we, <coughs> excuse me. So we have here. <coughs> so we have here squared of final velocity equals the squared of initial velocity plus two v s. 
since that we don't have a final velocity, so we will put it zero. Plus two initial velocity squared plus two as transpose the initial velocity, then we can get negative. So substitute all the values, then we can get negative eta eight squared equals two times negative two for the acceleration times s or displacement. So we can get s equals to one thousand nine hundred thirty six feet. That is our final answer. So the next problem we have here, a stone is thrown vertically upward and returns to earth in 10 seconds. What was its initial velocity and how high did it go? So we have here a given in the problem. We have t equals to 10 seconds and acceleration due to gravity since the stone is thrown vertically upward, we can get 32.2 feet per second squared. Next steps is to find the initial velocity and displacement. So to find it for initial velocity, we have here a problem or our formula. Final velocity is equals to initial velocity plus AT, where the same process on the previous slides to transpose the initial velocity then make it negative. Then since we don't have a final velocity, it will still zero equals to negative 32.2 times 10. This is negative 32.2 because when we turn up or vertically upward the stone, it goes down. This is the falling part of the stone. So we can get negative 32. Therefore, our initial velocity is 332 feet per second final answer next we find the displacement s equals to initial velocity times t plus one half times acceleration times the square root of t so since we don't have initial velocity so we will put it zero then one half plus at squared substitute all the values given so 32.2 it is positive because we thrown the stone upward, vertically upward. So it is positive times 10 squared. So we can get S equals to 1,610 feet. That is our final answer. So we have here another problem. A ball is dropped. Drop from the top of the tower, 80 feet high at the same instant, that a second ball is thrown upward from the ground with an initial velocity of 40 feet per second. When and where do they pass? And with what relative velocity? So we have here the given initial velocity is equal to 40 feet per second. Then displacement from the top of the tower, we have here 80 feet. Next step is to find the time first then the relative velocity. To answer this problem, we will first draw a free body diagram to analyze the situation. So we have here, which I drew, which I drawn here, that the tower that has 80 feet high, then the first ball is the orange one, and the second ball is the red one. When and where do they pass together? So we have here 80 minus height, then height, then displacement. Okay, let's find that. So based on the free body diagram, we can get the equation 1, which is height equals to velocity initial times time plus one half eighty squared. Substitute all the values. We have 40t minus one half times 32.2t squared or 16.1t squared. We have here the equation 2 based on the free body diagram. 80 minus height equals one half times 32.2t squared or height equals to 80 minus 16.1 t squared. Then next steps is to substitute equation 2 to equation 1 to find the 
time. So we can get 80 minus 16.1 t squared for the equation 2. Uh, from the equation 2, then it equals 40 t minus 1 half 32.2 times time squared for the equation 1. Since that negative 1 half times 32.2 t squared is equivalent to 16.1 t squared, so we will going to cancel it out because if we will going to transpose 8, it, it will become positive. So 16.1 t squared minus 16.1 t squared is equivalent to 0. So we, we have now 80 equals to 40 t. So to get the value of t, we will going to divide both sides by 40. So we can get t is equivalent to t is equal to 2 seconds. So we have now our time. So we will find the relative velocity. To find the relative velocity, we can get uh, we, ha we, we have height equals to 80 minus 16.2 times. So we will going to substitute now the value of 2 of time, which is 2 squared. So we can get 15.6 feet from the bottom. This is based on the second ball from the bottom. Then we have S prime equals 80 minus 15.6 feet. So we can get 64.4 feet from the top of the tower. This is from the first ball that is dropped. So final velocity is equals to initial velocity plus 80. For the velocity of the second ball, final velocity of the second ball, we can get 40 equal, minus 32.2 times 2. Then we have negative 24.4 feet per second. For the final velocity of ball 1, so initial velocity is 0 plus 32.2 times 2. So we can get 64.4 feet per second. To sum it up, to find the relative velocity, we will go into sum it up all the final velocities of the two balls. So we have the summation of V or velocity or the relative velocity equals final velocity plus final velocity of the second ball. So we can get 64.4 plus minus plus negative 24.4 feet per second and that's equivalent to V equals 40 feet per second. Now this is our relative velocity and our final answer is that since our since the question is very qualitative so we will answer it in a sentence form. So final answer after two second at 64.4 feet from the top of the tower relative velocity is 40 feet per second but anyway you can answer it with these solutions, not in this, in a sentence form, it's still the correct answer. So that's all for in this video. I hope you learned a lot. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more updates for the upcoming videos that you wanted to know. So if you have a suggestions or reactions about this video you can comment it down and i am and i am glad to reply it thank you and god bless